Welcome back to the JC Ashenheim Stadium on Old Hope Road in uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Standing by for the walkout of the teams, of course, Mona High versus Jonathan Grant High. In the return leg of their second round encounter. Both teams rearing to go, Jonathan Grant would have arrived at the venue a bit later than perhaps they would have liked affected their warm-up but let's see if they can shake off all that rust from their journeys in the heart of Spanish town to the capital Kingston Mona not very far from their home although Road, perhaps adjacent parallel to Mona Road if you can term it like that for those who have an idea of the geography especially those in the Caribbean, those, of course, in the diaspora looking on. So the referees enter the match as well as 22 players who will do battle. They'll duel all with the hope of making it to the quarterfinal. Jonathan Grant, they have a gargantuan task, four goal deficit. And those four goals were all done away by Mona. And the away goals rule definitely in play if there's a tie but Mona they are quietly confident that they can continue on the momentum that would have seen them as semi-finalists last year and the quietness in the Mona camp breathes an, an air of confidence what will they be able to deliver this season the referees uh, in charge of this one, O'Hara Headley, the man with the whistle, Brickton Archer, and Pervel Beckett, the assistants. The fourth official added Hamilton. And of course, this is the first of a double header here at the JC Ashdime complex. But the team from Mona. Let's have a quick look at their lineup. Akeem Bernard has six clean sheets. He starts with them in gold. Stephon Johnson, Dante Peralta, Carlton Brown, Alex Swazo. Javed Wallace, Romarian Thomas, Rabino Gordon, Denzel McKenzie, Demaria Harris, and Marlon Cunningham. They are coached by Craig Butler, and they line up in the Domino 5, as he calls it. It's really hard to explain. We'll try to pinpoint it as the match goes on. Two captains here, Akeem Bernard for Mona, and Dominic Grant for Jonathan Grant. They have their time conference with the referee here's a quick look at the Jonathan Grant lineup goalkeeper Sheldon York they have a back four of Dominic Grant Brian Williams Raheem Smith and Tafari Williams four in the middle Patrick Parks Antoine Ellis the man to watch Rashar Williams Ian Dennis and the two strikers, Lawrence Barrett and Demario Morrison, they're coached by Camille Wolf. So I'm Dean Smith. With me is Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor, your initial thoughts on this matchup? Very one-sided in the first leg. Uh, Mona, with lots of experience from last season coming in with, with lots of goals goals 42 goals in the competition so far eight wins from eight make it nine out of nine now if you count the first leg so as i said uphill task is just uh, well that doesn't really put the full reflection on what jonathan grant need to accomplish here it would be a miracle and a half here's romarin thomas always able to pierce through romarin thomas has a strike too from distance and uh, the attacking intent of mona definitely on display the get to corner in the first minute of the encounter Thomas was obviously as you say in, in and well you, you mentioned a shot from distance had one of the goals of the season from some distance against Wilmers last season one of seven goals he scored Romari and Thomas to go with his four assists here's the corner kick from Denzel McKenzie and there is 
not properly cleared. The shot is off, and a beautiful save from the keeper. Kept that one out. Dante Prato was in the thick of things. They still have possession. They lose it now through Lawrence Barrett for Jonathan Grant. Great move that from Carlton Brown. He's through. Brown lifts it across. Rabina Gordon was trying to get on the end of that one, but still not cleared. Wallace on the ball. So many players retained from last season, Mona Height. A lot of the starting 11 was present at the school, and that makes good for their chances of, of going really deep in the tournament. As I said, semi finalists last year, and it would be a big surprise if they are not at least there this year. Well, that's a look at their coach, Craig Butler, and a lot can be said about him. His coaching exploit certainly good from a developmental perspective getting a lot of players to the top level most notably of course being Dijon Whisper Richards signing directly from a past schoolboy football player all the way to Chelsea Mona they have a free kick Thomas that was straight to the goalkeeper Sheldon York Chris, of course, you'd have heard the inflection of my voice just a while ago, but whenever he strikes the ball, you, you never know what can happen. And you have to be prepared just for the eventuality of a super strike. He's that good. Yeah, very good from distance. Uh, just as we thought Jonathan Grant had finally gotten out of the area. They've been pinned back in the first few minutes here. As we see their head coach there, Camille Wolf. brother of Woolry Rolf, the San Diego head coach. And Jonathan Grant, of course, I mean, his alma mater as well, did well in the zone. Six wins from ten matches. But yeah, they've come up again, a really tough Mona High team. And I mean, they're so deflated, they even turned up late to this fixture, very late, not moments before. I'm not sure how much of a, a proper warm-up they could have had. Hardly a warm-up. They came directly on the field. I'm not sure if they were warming in the dressing room, but yeah, that wouldn't be much either. So I, I mentioned earlier that the diamond five formation that Mona lineup as they have a back two they have two midfielders then they have a holding midfielder they have three they call them wide players and one forward so certainly adventurous in how they line up the Mona at first it was a domino six then it moved to a domino five while I spoke with him and uh, there are some elements of that you can see. Referee Headley, a call against Alex Suazo. They call him Mexican. Number six for Mona there on your screen. It was late. Knocked the socks out of Patrick Parks. The opposite number for Jonathan Grant. Well, they tried to bend up from the back, Jonathan Grant. He had a lot of space there. The ball is through. But the offside flag was up. Yeah, it wasn't so difficult for Jonathan Grant to get themselves inside the 18-yard box. And that was an issue for Mona last season, where against the better teams, they were exposed defensively, especially in the wide area. So as you mentioned, just the two center backs and players playing what he believes is, is total football. And yeah, at times caught short at the back. Here's Thomas. Thomas with the strike. That went wide. 
Yeah, another bad attempt from Romarian Thomas. Has a technique. Ball did take a slight bubble before he kicked it. And so they're pulling it wide, but yeah. Craig Butler believes that a lot of his players can play in any position. Hence, you even see situations with his goalkeeper. Eight assists for Akeem Bernard this season to go with two goals. So Versatility not questioned whatsoever. Yeah. Here's a corner kick. Well, there's some jostling, some pulling, some tugging. Referee Headley says to Carlton Brown, get yourself in order. Kenzie with the corner. Carlton Brown was trying to get ahead to it, but able to clear just beyond the 18 yard area, but the resulting shot way off the mark. Yeah, Jonathan Grant have never won the, the Manning Cup, but they have won the Walker Cup. Back in 1999, one title for them, one better than Mona. But when you look at the talent pool in both these teams at the moment, you'd have to think that Mona closest to winning the next football trophy between these two schools, especially at this level. Certainly. A lot of the Mona players also would have had experiences with the Phoenix Academy of Perhaps all of them are part of the Phoenix Academy and their European tours definitely would give them an advantage just to expose them to a wider level of football. And Third just season this now, yeah. Craig Butler, and since he has taken over. The funny thing about it is when you look at Mona over the years, they've always produced really good individuals at the football level, but they haven't been able to keep the players. As soon as the players have been, rea have been seen or realised, they have moved on to, to bigger football in schoolboy academies yeah and so you check quite a few of them you see that you know they started out at Mona and they moved on to other schools but since he's come here Craig Butler he's been able to put together a really good core group of players assist him and Mona even though they haven't won a title yet they have seen results certainly one factor a part of that would have been also at that time, Mona didn't have a six-form program, so they would have always had a disadvantage retaining some of the older players. But now they do have that. It's a Ellis behind. He leaves it, and a second player leaves it straight to goal. Easily handled by Akeem Bernard, who punts it forward. But the header is sent back the direction of the Mona goal. Captain there, Dominic Grant, doing well, but Mona still have possession. Ball being sent wide for Dante Peralta, his second season in the Banning Cup. Ball being shielded by his opposite number four, the captain for Jonathan Grant, Dominic Grant. course is lots of schoolboy football action today perhaps this is the first of a whole sl slate of matches in the Manning and the Costa Cup of course on our YouTube channel at 230 big matchup on hand here's Jonathan Grant through Demario Morrison trying the back heel but play broken up Ryan Smith with a throw in for Jonathan Grant. Yeah. 
Thomas. Here's Thomas. And he, the referee, points to the spot. Initially, he tried to continue his run, did Romarian Tom Thomas. So it's a penalty for yeah. Mono. Just the 12th minute. And yeah, just like that, Mona with a chance to widen the, the gap. And Thomas already, he's been in the thick of things. That was a careless challenge, wasn't it, from the captain? Dominic Grant, yeah. Late. And to his credit, Romarin Thomas, he actually tried to continue the run, so he really wasn't asking for it. And perhaps had he gone down a bit cheaper, who knows, in the mind of the referee, could have just brushed it off, but certainly a foul of the correct call. A definite penalty. Yeah. That was an easy call for referee Headley. The man standing behind it is Rubino Gordon, already has 12 goals this season. And interestingly, he... A nine assists. Last season, a man who scored five goals. First attack player, played in the centre-back position last season. In fact, came into the all manning squad eventually and played in that in in that kind of defensive role was a late replacement into the squad Sheldon York has a lot to answer for and let's see if he can provide the answers of Gordon steps up converts coolly and the chorus of Mona students here Mona pride definitely alive and well Craig Butler, he's loving that one. They're loving that one. Early departure from school to support their team as they continue to march. 5-0 on aggregate. 1-0 on the day so far. Sheldon York hard done by perhaps an easy penalty. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest penalty at all. A little bit too central, but got the job done. Under York. And yeah, look at how composed and easy he was about coming up to the spot almost too easy and that's been the kind of performance it's been between these two teams an easy performance for Mona High haven't been pushed by this Jonathan Grant team held them out for a bit in the first leg but then Mona really started to apply the pressure and completed a big score line Well, what was already a hard task, only getting harder now. Of course, Jonathan Grant High, the principal, Dr. O'Neill Ankle, had a lot to say about the dunce bags in school. Took a firm stance at the start of the school school year that none of those school none of those bags would be allowed in his institution, and I like that type of firm leadership, even if it doesn't go with the social narrative that exists at the time. Two players down, we hope they are okay. We have seen some movement from both Jonathan Grant players, obviously a head collision. Referee Headley was a bit concerned. Good to see the movement though, so we're hoping that they're okay. We did have a, an uneasy incident last week, as it, the San Diego goalkeeper. Leighton Moria. Yeah. So download the Sportsmax app today, get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store, and watch all the action inside ISA Schoolboy Football this season and the S SFL in Trinidad and Tobago. Schoolboy Football is free on Sportsmax Plus. And Sportsmax Plus, of course, only on the app. And you can follow all the league action highlights and scores and watch live matches too. Get the Sportsmax app. Very enjoyable league, the high school football league in Trinidad and Tobago. If you're ever there and, and get an opportunity to watch it, it's worth watching. Some really nice venues and a, a very competitive league. Obviously, you have dominant schools in that league, Naparima College and others, but very competitive. The turnout and seems tremendous when yeah, I see the matches. Very well supported yeah. as well. And, you know, it's all over the island. 
north, south, east and west and Tobago as well where you can take the ferry over or the plane and even though the Tobago schools have not well for some time now have not really done all that well in the championship league they still are represented here's Thomas again has been causing lots of problems on this right hand side shakes free of his marker can he send a delightful ball through it was delightful but it didn't go through here's Morrison trying to break for Jonathan Grant through now to Parks has for company looks to be Stephon Johnson make that Marlon Cunningham yeah actually won the throw in did Mona Thomas in possession once more Parks Peralta on this one now for Mona Gordon gets in the area does Gordon stays on his feet brings it across but played out for a corner kick Marion Harris was there waiting for that one. The number 11 for Mona, but worthwhile play from the defenders, Brian Williams in particular, for Jonathan Grant to play it out. Here's the corner kick from Denzel McKenzie. Headers through, but only to a defender who was able to clear it. Dominic Grant trying to rally his troops. amazing how high this Mona back line is allowed to play as well in fact all players except Akeem Bernard are both the half line at some points it just shows the dominance that they have over this Jonathan Grant team so far Lawrence Barrett there was trying to outrun Mona's number 18 That player was Giovanni Robinson. Yeah, that number 18 player. Jonathan Grant, they have a throw in deep in their half. They've really been pegged in their half. Carlton Brown now for Mona in the area. He's trying to hustle his way through to goal, but. Here's Lawrence Barrett. Swazo for Mona. Connecting well with Morrison, but Akeem Bernard was always ahead in covering that one. Swazo. Peralta does well first time.
happy to see the sun out. Of course, there was a flood watch on the island. And uh, I'm happy that Issa didn't go the route of the Met Office. Let's see the route of this ball. Bernard handles it easily in the end. Waste no time in releasing it forward. Grant doing well to clear. Maybe where he has eight assists already, that was actually a good release and nearly played in two of his attackers. I mean, it's the high line of Mona. Jonathan Grant, they still haven't been able to beat the offside trap. Or the water trap, which is now on us, based on that sunshine you're talking about. I guess the officials deciding that it is quite hot. And even though this, the sun is out now and, and so on, that, the, the trough that you mentioned over the island, there is still quite a bit of grey cloud around. I mean, it's not threatening, but it is there. Camille Wolf having a lot to talk with his team about, of course. Down a goal on the afternoon, five goals on aggregate. Yeah, that's all the action you can get on the Sportsmax app. So much channels to choose from. So much sport to look at as well. Oh, she's enjoying it. And she's enjoying your voice too. Horse well, racing as well. Not on that sport. The sport of kings, if you ask <laughs> Lars Whitaker. <laughs> and yeah, we're back to football. So both matches available today from the JC Ashenheim complex. And of course on YouTube as well. Matches in the Da Costa Cup, Ricardo Chambers on commentary duties. Oh, he loves himself some Da Costa Cup football by his own admission. Yeah, double header in St. Elizabeth. Big matches going on there and there. Round of 32. Round of 16, actually. Sorry. So, of course, in the Da Costa Cup, matches on today. That will be televised live. Yes, big match between home team Stets and Clarendon College. Yeah, that's the second of the double header. Yeah, that will be a, a blockbuster game as well. Both with wins in their first matches. Stets defeating Cornwall College in in the in their first match of that group, and Cornwall and then Clarendon College defeating Mile Gully. In fact, Mile Gully. They lost 2-0, but I thought they did pretty well to hold Clarendon to just two goals. Here's Peralta. Can he convert? Oh, that went just wide of the upright. Remonstrating with himself. And Peralta, who has scored twice already this season, favors the left foot, should have buried that overlapping wing back. And yeah, he should have hit the target there. He knows it as well. Dante Peralta is farther part of the coaching staff. Pretty good footballer in his own way, Dean Peralta two assists to go with his two goals Dante that probably should have been third there's his father he was on interview duties earlier as well with Craig Butler <laughs> talking about the diversity of the of the team and what they bring to the table yes, not taking the opponents lightly yeah booted out by Brian Williams for throwing Jonathan Grant there under the weather. <laughs> mm. So the other matchup at that double head, of course, between BB Coke and Manchester High, and those two teams that have won their opening matches as well, Manchester. So two top of the table clashes. Yeah. Manchester, Manchester got the better of Taki 4-1. Correct. And BB Coke, they beat Happy Grove 3-2. Three three two. Two. Come from behind as well, I think it was. Happy to see the Taki able to represent themselves well. Here's Suazo, that shot ch charged down, of course. I'm from the parish of St. Mary. We'd love to see more St. Mary schools going deep into the competition. That hasn't happened in quite a while. 
certainly not at the under 19 to cost the cup level or at the under 16 under 14 level either yeah tacky more known for producing cricketers at the schoolboy level john campbell john first campbell, you. <laughs> the biggest of them yeah <laughs> west indies player jamaica player Alwyn Williams, Jamaica player as well. He's actually out now due to sickness. Williams, but a very good all-rounder. Played with John Campbell as well, and both of them have transitioned to the senior level. So, yeah, not necessarily the same kind of products from football just yet, but I agree with you. Good to see. And for a long time in that game, Manchester were leading by a goal to nil. Taki were right there, and then as the second half progressed, Manchester ran away with it 4-1. Here's Jonathan Grant through Parks. Hustled off the ball and Carlton Brown using his keeper. Of course, St. Elizabeth a strong parish in the Costa Cup football as Certainly. well. Here's Peralto. Gets by his man. Gets it across. And the shot from Brown. I'll make that Gordon. Tested the keeper somewhat, but it was saved. Yeah, that should have been a goal. Great pass by Peralto. Here's McKenzie. It's just too easy for Mona. And you somewhat wonder what is keeping them encouraged because, as you say, a five-goal lead, and it's just been so easy for them. I would say good work by Craig Butler as well to keep them enthused about, you know, coming out here and putting on a top performance, looking to score more goals. Here's a corner kick. Still in a dangerous place. Peralta chips it in once more, but it goes out. It's a goal kick for Jonathan Grant. Yeah, no signs to suggest that Jonathan Grant are going to get anywhere into this game or this tie at all, trailing by five goals. There's just really no way back for them. And it's probably really about, about keeping the respect here limiting the amount of goals that Mona will score, maybe even trying to get on the score sheet themselves. You look at their record this season, a pretty good one, came second to the group, in, t in second in Group C behind Haley Selassie, who won the group. And Jonathan Grant, six wins and three draws from their first row, just a one loss, which came at the hands of Haley Selassie. 31 goals scored, seven against. So a pretty good first round record, yeah. but again, you step up now when you come into this round of 16 and getting up against a team like Mono is one of the best and would argue that they are probably the best in the competition. Well, the argument will be settled Eventually. over the upcoming weeks. Certainly in November, a month of decision in both the Manning and the Costa Cups. Champions Cup action will start in this month as well. Last year, Mona, they were put to task by Clarendon College in their opening round matchup in the Champions Cup. Clarendon College beat them 3 0 on the day. And that's where we spoke about that defensive vulnerability at the, in the back line attacked heavily from the wide areas, which is where Clarendon College is strong as well. They had some really good overlapping wing-backs, Jones especially. And then you had, like, for example, Christopher Hull coming off of one flank in the forward line, who is still there. It was, it was a tough task, and Mona never really got into the game. We weren't allowed to, in fact. <laughs> yeah. they, they did a lot more defending than, than forward play. Pinnock and Kumpa and Mitchell were, were nullified almost on Hugh Mitchell and Zane Pinnock, their two. Well, they had many standout players, but I think those two were the biggest players for them last season. Without question. Peralto behind this corner kick, lifts it high in the area, headed out. Here's Jonathan Grant. Lawrence Barrett. Crucial challenge that from Alex Suazo to avert the danger. He gets the yellow card, of course. The goalkeeper was way off his line.
And yeah, there are some who say, well, perhaps yellow card is fortunate for Alex Suazo. Not being so close to the halfway line. Of course, the referee would have taken that into consideration, but they have a free kick. Grant didn't really lift it. Easily handled by Mona. They give up a throw, but minor matters in the thick of things. Now they get a corner, just does Jonathan Grant. play out Thomas on the ball here's Antoine Ellis loses possession Gordon and Peralta combining well on the left and flank Gordon cuts in gets by one did a bit too much there and Tafari Williams able to dispossess him but Mona they still have the opportunity well they lose possession again Here's Morrison. Hasn't been the most attractive matchup we've seen from a possession point of view, Chris. Of course, Mona very direct. They're not really passing the ball around aimlessly. They're going straight to the objective sometimes as a result they lose possession but that's just their own style of play doesn't lend itself to perhaps beautiful football well they lose it for maybe about 10 seconds and then they have it I'm sure the percentages must be heavy in Mona's favor I would like to think almost 80 20 at this point And then they get careless like that kind of situation with Mackenzie giving away the ball. But again, it's the fact that Jonathan Grant really are not threatening them in any way. They, they no pressure on them. Yeah. And it's, as they say, a stroll in the park, another yellow card. Patrick Parks, the guilty player there. kick lifted in the area but easily handled by Akeem Bernard excellent distribute of the ball with feet and hand here's another run and it seems to be it will be another penalty another penalty yeah it's clear and guess who brought him down Patrick Parks who is on a yellow card he just received a yellow card Parks <laughs> well the referee Headley, I think his aim is to try and keep 22 players on the park. It's already hard enough for Jonathan Grant. I would like to think that that should have been another yellow card and a sending off, but he decides to ease him up, as they would say. So Thomas brought down again. It's the second time Thomas has been brought down and the second time he's earned a penalty. And well, it's Bernard who's going to take this one. Interesting, so a chance for three on the season. He'll be outdoing himself, scored twice last season. Did Akeem Bernard. Had three assists as well last season, so he's already done better. Certainly has grown some more as well. In some of those matches last season, he actually came out of the goal. Here's Bernard, can't strike, and that was rifled beyond Stevie York. Does the Valley rock as well? And Mona is rocking two goals, six on aggregate. And you can talk about the Domino six or the Domino five, whichever one you like. 
That's a rocket down the centre. Yeah, I think York was almost trying to get out of the way. He did get a hand to it, but no chance to save it. Look at that. He was protecting his face there, York. <laughs> you have dry humour, Chris Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> that would have taken his head off. Um, it really would have. Yeah. No surprise from a goalkeeper's perspective. They usually like to drill them with the instep. And that was no different. I do think he's gotten a little bit taller. He was an imposing figure last season. But you look at him, I, I think he looks more trim for a goalkeeper there was, was talks last year that he looked a little bit overweight a little bit heavy yeah but i think he's trimmed he looks a lot fitter this season and he's moving better as well which is a good sign for him i mean outside of mona going forward so it's thanks to the heavens for his opportunity to score his third of the season not many goalkeepers would have those kind of stat three goals and eight assists so midfielders might be like in those kind of statistics. Can he keep another clean sheet? Already has six this season. And of course, you see again evidence of his ability to distribute even at far distances. Yeah. Jonathan Grant there trying to come through. Lawrence Barrett there taking it down nicely, trying to turn, but he's tackled up gets the foul Ellis now on the ball trying to bring it to Barrett Barrett has space to turn turns again and he turns into traffic doesn't have the the navigation of the taxi men in Kingston to turn out of traffic Chris mm. it's a very good tackle coming in as well well timed and if he's hurt his shoulder as well Lawrence Barrett there. Holding that shoulder. He's already scored twice this season, Barrett. Medical staff attended to him as well as the opposing goalkeeper. Headley indicating that the stretcher should come on for him. Of course, there you get to get the game on hand. Here's what happened to Barrett. It was an awkward foul, awkward fall rather, not a foul. He's back up now. Craig, the philosopher, certainly has the beard of the men of old from Greece. Yeah. <laughs> Giving some instructions to Alex Suazo. That beard is young in comparison. Certainly it is. Ellis on the ball for Jonathan Grant, being tackled up by Suazo. Yeah, the Mona players definitely have a physical presence about them that will easily ease off many of the Jonathan Grant players. They, some of them look much smaller than the Mona players. Barrett and Parks, especially. Morrison, too. Parks with the delivery. Mona able to break now. Carlton Brown. Connecting, connecting with Gordon. Cunningham.
fell nicely for Denzel McKenzie. McKenzie cuts inside, shoots, and he goes wide. It's a corner kick, though. Took a deflection. Yeah, the pass coming from Akeem Bernard yet again. Awkward bounce. Free to McKenzie. You saw what he was trying to do. Just use the defender as a guide to place it into the far corner. But there was a deflection, a touch, slight touch, which probably prevented Mona from adding the. Mona team 18 assists that's a lot that's a, a whole leap in fact I think that's the number that Dijon Richards ended up Accounting for last season, 30 goals, 18 assists, was it, I think? And I think that was the head, that the leader in terms of assists last season in the Manning Cup. So for McKenzie to already be at 18 is really a phenomenal feat. Yeah. And Mona still have some distance to go in this competition. Seven goals to his credit, Denzel McKenzie. National Under-17 representative earlier this year. Now the CONCACAF Championships missed out on qualifying for the Under-17 World Cup. Ellis for Jonathan Grant loses possession gets the call from referee Headley takes it quickly Barrett loses it McKenzie connecting with Thomas now who has switched flanks with Gordon gets the return ball from Thomas does McKenzie at the byline plays it out from a defender for a corner kick and the intensity certainly just by the body language Chris of the Mona players not at the level that they started at of course with a six goal cushion it's hard to blame them with the first half coming to a close in the next three minutes they have a corner kick lifted in the area the header was from Thomas but there was a foul in the build-up Call being made on Mona's behalf there. Have a free kick in their own half. It's a throw in actually. Bernard miscontrol that releases Denzel McKenzie he's fouled referee Headley goes into his pocket once more it's going to be a yellow card being flashed to Tafari Williams 
the six goal man for Jonathan Grant. Header was thrown from Demarion Harris. And Denzel McKenzie was definitely through on goal. Let's see what magic they can spark from this favorable position for a free kick. Sheldon York beaten six times over the tie so far. Three players still vying for presiding duties over this free kick. Peralta and Thomas leave it for McKenzie. Straight to goal and it's in. Duncan McKenzie seems unbothered. Denzel McKenzie seems unbothered by that one. Easy does it for the number 10. Eight goals this season for the man. Named after a movie star, Denzel Washington McKenzie. And with those skills, he might go on the big screen. He's already there. Yeah, disappointing. From a goalkeeper's perspective, York. But yeah. Good finish in the end for Mackenzie. You'll take it. A man who would know this field quite well, a former Jamaica College schoolboy, Mackenzie. And as I said, getting it done under 17 experience now looks very composed. But that should have been saved. And another nail in the coffin of Jonathan Grant. Well, the halftime will give them some time to perhaps fry out some of those nails, Chris. But at the half, Mona three, Jonathan Grant nil. Manning Cup second round action, the round of 16. Mona in cruise control, seven goals to their credit over the tie. Sports Max 2 Lime Hall Football Club versus Waterhouse Sunday 1 p.m. 2 in the rest of the Caribbean and in the second match of the double header Mount Pleasant versus Dumbe Holder 315 415 in the rest of the Caribbean that two on Sports Max 2 confirmation of the first half score Mona 3 Jonathan Grant nil Getting ready for second half action here at the JC Ashenheim Stadium. So, yeah, we're seeing the action as uh, the Mona players warm up for second half action fans are also there in the stands So the aggregate score seven nil right now, Chris. Seventh heaven for Mona. Yeah, easy for Mona. High. Last year semi finalist in this competition. Jonathan Grant, not much for them. You see quite a few substitutes warming up for Jonathan Grant. He's not on cam at the moment, but 
why not exposure for their entire bench as well no real no way back to me for Jonathan Grant in this fixture so right now playing for pride trail by seven goals and aggregate three on the day and when you looked at those first half statistics just 25 percent in terms of possession for them but yeah good to see the support out as well Dijon Richards is here Chelsea player now national representative part of the Phoenix Academy so always close by Craig Butler when he's in Jamaica Dijon Richards leading goal scorer last season in this competition with Kingston College what 30 goals 18 assists phenomenal feat for the man big number 10 and uh, every subsequent number 10 will live under the shadow of Dijon Richards especially at Kingston College for sure even the schoolboy football montage song has had references to his accomplishment Gone to international big league. Yeah. Trying to be the singing there. Adriana Vassal coming on for Alex Suazo. That's a, the first half change made by Mona. You've always been done a bit of singing, Dean Smith. It's a DJ I'm wondering about. I do believe I have some abilities, yeah. That was actually a part of my EP, a song of that genre. I see. Another yellow card being produced early here by referee Headley. Tough challenge coming in. Was it Tom Thomas again? Is it Thomas who is doing it? Looks like him, Romarion Thomas. Ellis has picked up the yellow card. It was Thomas who earned both penalties, Romarion Thomas. I do think it's him again. Busy figure, yeah, the number eight. The pink boots. Scored twice in the 4 0 win in the first leg. Won both penalties here today. Laid on a platter for him, he fires, but that was going wide. Jonathan Grant getting the opportunity to clear, but. Making a meal of it, really. God now turns inside, lifts it up. Substitution being made by Jonathan Grant, Javion Thomas, the number nine coming on, leaving the field, Demario Morrison. Bit of an injury for Morrison. Wouldn't be surprised if they make quite a few changes. Jonathan Grant, as I said, give some opportunities to some of the fringe players who haven't been playing much throughout the season. Bernard on the duress. Dante and Stevenson there get into play out. Johnson. Coming into the round of 16, Jonathan Grant would only have suffered one loss against Haley Selassie, a 2 0 two loss. But apart from that, favorable results. So there still might have been opportunity in some of those games to, to, to utilize their bench more. Six wins out of ten. But they've certainly had to use their best contingent against this Mona team, and it still hasn't been good enough. It's been a cruise. It's been, yeah, it's really Mona. been easy for Mona. Thomas. Gordon chasing, but that one will go out of touch. Some academy 
Mona High School have, have built here, as I said, since Craig, Craig Butler arrived three seasons ago. This is his third season. But as I said before, Mona were unable to hold on to players. Now they are recruiting players. Quite a few players on this Mona team have come from outside as well. In fact, a couple, what, four or five JC, former JC players in their squad, former JC schoolboys in their squad. Let's go better than that, Chris. Some players are even from other countries. Alex Swans, of course, the number six who has come off at, came off at halftime, being one of them. Yeah. Did spend time at Hillel Academy as well. One of the private schools of Kingston. Peralta, who just hit the ball, was originally at St. George's College, so he's made a move as well. Goalkeeper Bernard, who is fetching that ball now, was originally from Spanish Town. There's Suazo. Call him Mexican. So, lots of movement here. And, and not, no surprise, because I guess with Craig Butler at the helm, it will encourage players and will, you know, bring personalities to the school persons probably want to be as you said the next to Sean Richards the next Leon Bailey in terms of exposure in terms of going overseas and at the Phoenix Academy he's been able to give that kind of exposure as well players want to be in systems where the means are there to to aid their development systems of play proper nutrition programs supplements all of those things which develop players physically as well which is important in terms of their growth certainly we've seen a lot of the smaller schools have talent but as the season goes on they struggle to keep up they fall away and it's because of those other things depth of squad also important in long seasons so yeah that's something that Mona lacked last year, and that was due primarily to registration issues in terms of having players having to sit out. But this year they have a full bench, so. Well, some coaches still like to have reasonably small squads, eh? He did speak to that as well, but. He said that then, but. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie. Thomas? Oh, yeah. Of course, he himself, Craig Butler, is a product of Jamaica College. He went to school here. So would know these grounds very well. Some more changes that we spoke about from Jonathan Grant. No surprise. That change will come in a short while. As Jonathan Grant, they try to from the back here's Vassal for Mona Gordon did well to get on the end of that one Jonathan Grant able to come forward but only midway there half ball through to Brown offside flag was up Passes they have really been few for Jonathan Grant. Here's Barrett. That cut out by Peralto. Peralto again doing defensive work there. Easy handling for Akeem Bernard. Converting the second goal, a penalty. Struck well. Struck like a keeper. Laces behind it, yeah. And Steve York had to really shield his face. God, doing well to take that down first time. Good defensive work from Parks to push it out, but it's Thomas now. 
Did great work to get two penalties, did Thomas. Wins the corner kick for Bona. Javed Wallace leaves the field and Giovanni Robinson enters 18 for 19. Here's a corner kick for Mona. Lifted in the area. And the bicycle kick from Rabina Gordon. It did go on target. Didn't have a lot of power behind it, but it really has a beauty to it yeah it went down rather than going forward and this thing would have come off because of that downward trajectory it's another attempt but the clear is jonathan grant haven't been doing much of that here's robinson lifts it in the area the header well was blocked by york the follow-up by mckenzie Here's Mona still in possession. Thomas. Johnson. Thomas lifts it across. And what a finish from Denzel McKenzie. His second of the afternoon. It was a great pass from Romario and Thomas. He's been instrumental in three of the four goals on the afternoon for Mona. And Stephen York beaten at the near post by a superb tap-in. He really did well first time, Chris Taylor. Another 4-0 performance from Mona High. Nice build-up again, just way too easy. And they are a class above Jonathan Grant. Romario Thomas with the delivery, excellent. Right on the feet, right on the right foot of Denzel McKenzie. And yeah, 56-minute finish. And he now has nine on the season. There's McKenzie. Picks up the assist from Marion Thomas. And as I said, has been fully involved in the play today, winning two penalties and then providing that fourth goal for McKenzie. Here's Ellis. Ellis answers for Jonathan Grant. Here's the player to watch. And Mona, they weren't watching really. And a cool finish. In the 57th minute, Antoine Ellis gets one back. Nice consolation goal from a Jonathan Grant perspective. Positive moment for them. Get on this score sheet. The first they have got on this score sheet in this tie. 4-0 they lost the first leg. Good build-up play. Nice finish. Yeah, no chance for Bernard and Ellis picking up his fifth goal of the season second highest scorer for this Jonathan Grant team still lots of work to do though 8-1 on aggregate perhaps that will give some amount of motivation for Mona to really go even harder at it especially if the substitutes come on they'll be trying to prove a point to the coach He did mention that they have a habit, does Mona, of giving the substitutes the opportunity to play, especially when they're comfortably in front. They've only made two substitutions so far, Mona. Two of a possible seven in four periods. Here's Thomas. Releases Vassal. Look at the shot. Wonderfully saved by York.
Corner kick down from Bona. Let's see what they can do from this one. Mackenzie lifts it deep to the back post. Header from Rubina Gordon. On the into his own player. Does well to regain possession. Wins another free kick. Gordon and Harris there. Harris skews it up for Thomas. Barrett trying to do some defensive work for Jonathan Grant. Thomas plays it off him for a corner kick. Thomas lifts that one in the area. Tell you what, you really have to have a cute sense of sight to discern between the number three and the number eight. That's eight. And I tell you, if you can find number three, you'll see the plight I'm having. That's for Mona. Changes are ringing. Lawrence Barrett coming off and Dominic Prince entering the field of play, number two for Jonathan Grant. For Mona, Demarion Harris leaves and Sean Layton enters. Started playing three seasons ago as a 14-year-old Sean Layton has grown to a six-footer. I saw him when I was getting some uniforms for my son and I tell you I was shocked that the tiny tot was torn over me, Chris. Gets his first touch on the ball. Gordon plays it for McKenzie. The return ball wasn't good. Or was it a handle ball in the area? Yes, it was. Bahara Headley points to the spot. Again. <laughs> Third penalty. This time, McKenzie with the delivery into the area. And right away as he played the pass, he was trying to signal to the referee that it was obviously a handball. The assistant agreed. Pervel Beckett on that far side. Here it was a pass inside. And away from the body, wasn't it? Yeah. Unfortunate from a Jonathan Grant perspective. Probably enough distance that he could have put his arms closer to his torso and third change in terms of the penalty kicks today we've seen Bernard we've seen Gordon now we see Peralto Dante Peralta from 12 yards it saved Stevie York with a great save he hasn't given up Chris Taylor and there was some amount of force behind that one. Wasn't the easiest penalty to save, perhaps, in terms of where it was struck. Yes, but, yeah, the force behind it, he really had to pull out some strength. Yeah, straight down the middle from Peralta, though. Not good in terms of placement. Just went for raw power, and it wasn't as much power as Bernard. <laughs> and, in fact, the one with Bernard, it actually followed him, so I had the goalkeeper in a, an awkward position this time. He was able to get his hands up in a strong position to make the save. Almost like a double save because it's almost as if it, it stopped on his hands and then he pushed it out. Mm. Peralta deciding to strike with the right foot. We've seen him use the left as well. 
unable to add a third for the season. Here's Mona, Thomas. Wonder who their designated penalty kicker will be when the matches get a lot closer and in tight situations where you, you don't really have the luxury in the, like here where they're leading by Here's Bernard. Bernard is making a run deep in the opposition half and he's still there. Decides to go back down the offside flag would be up against Gordon. Adventurous to say the least. <laughs> Makes for good entertainment, mm -hmm. and I, I can't help but admit that Craig Butler does provide entertainment value to schoolboy football. I've admonished him that he needs to return to his marketing strategies. Here's a cross from Tafari Williams. Nathaniel Campbell there. Sean Layton, Layton playing it out for a throw in. Some signs from Akeem Bernard there of the famous Colombian goalkeeper, Rene Higuita. Love those kind of overlapping runs coming out, getting above the half line with twists and turns. We need a taller here though. <laughs> <laughs> Much longer here you would need. <laughs> yes. And probably a bit of a mustache as well to go with it. Higita, especially in the 1990 World Cup. His exploits did eventually cost him a goal, though, against Cameroon, if you remember, Roger Mia. That celebration from Roger Mia definitely set alive that World Cup. <laughs> Dancing by the corner flag. Yeah. a free kick in a dangerous position for Jonathan Grant. Let's see if they can convert the strike. Weak in the end. Played out by Chansu. And yeah, you can see that number three we well, just saw it a while ago. It's a throw in for Jonathan Grant. They take it quickly trying to lift it in the area Nathaniel Campbell in all sorts of problems he tries to or try to hold the ball in his feet to turn it away from the players yeah Akeem Bernard will take the kick check in on his opponent as well in fact he places the ball right by his head there's Akeem Bernard it's the Farrer Williams I actually do wonder if Higita might be somewhat of his, you know, a, a goalkeeper that he might look up to, or is it from a a, but, a Craig Butler perspective? Because I can't think of a, a higher scoring goalkeeper than Rene Higita. He scored over 40 goals in his professional career generally, and three times he scored for Colombia at the international level. So. It could be something he's thinking of. He's already gone three for the season in schoolboy football. And as I said, probably the original man when it came to the, the, the keeper sweeper style, Higita. He actually went more than just a sweeper, though. He <laughs> yeah. was actually playing as a midfielder, sometimes even <laughs> as a forward. He would get so high up the pitch. Hmm. A blast from the past. The younger generation needs uh, people like you, Chris. Jamaica College warming up. They have the privilege of playing in the second matchup on their home venue. They help them hide their opponents. The defending champions, we must remind you, lead 3 0 on aggregate. So, a similar scenario coming into this one. Well, yeah, Mona were leading by four goals to nil. And there's the Eltham team that has lots of work to do. Definitely can't afford to go down early. Or it will end up being a situation like this. At least Jonathan Grant have gotten back a goal. But as 
with an 8 1 aggregate to Mona, it's just really playing out time. Huge campus here at Jamaica College. Of course, you saw the shot of, uh, of Jamaica College warming up there, warming up by an adjacent field to this one, and that's another full sized field. Download the Sportsmax app today, get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store, and watch all the action in ISA schoolboy football for free in Sportsmax Plus and so much other sporting action, other sporting channels to feed your sporting desires. Very easy to navigate as well. Just a click and the home screen, all your options ever present. Almost tells you where to go. And as I said, so much sport. Cricket, track and field, football, many different kinds of football. You saw the, the horse racing channel earlier as well your eyes lit up when you said horse racing <sighs> <laughs> i can tell you my knowledge is little to none <laughs> as for the likes of, of lance whitaker and even george perhaps, davis perhaps your purse isn't little to none <laughs> <laughs> in fact george davis who we just mentioned his his old school is is jonathan grant as well he won't be happy with the aggregate or the score line at the moment sorry george davis but good, yeah. good afternoon to you, George. I know you're watching this one. Yeah. I absolutely know you're watching this one. They've had better days. He would like to tell you when he was there, which probably was 1999 as well, when, yeah. they, when they won the, the Walker, Cup. Walker Cup. He was still a student. Mackenzie lifts this one. Yeah. Steve York doing well to tip it over. Keneal Wolf, rather, who coaches San Diego, brother of Keneal Wolf, the coach of Jonathan Grant, was on that team. Scored yeah. the goal. For Jonathan Grant. For yeah. Jonathan Grant to win the Walker Cup. Memories. Leighton. And both went to the school as well. Both Keneal and himself. Obviously went on to play professional football in Woolery and represent the reggae boy level as well. Well-known name in Jamaican football. Mm, the Wolfpack, if you remember. <laughs> Keneal and Woolery. Has a touch of WWE wrestling to it, Wolfpack. Mm. Would you find that on the app as well? I'm not sure. Perhaps. Here's <laughs> Kishane. Gordon there. Three times he scored this season, Gordon. They're number seven. In fact, he's one of those three goals came in the first picture, that 4 0 win. The Mona number seven. Not a bad strike. Uh, tipping, but not enough to get it under the crossbar. Did have goalkeeper York busy for a moment. Has made a couple of really good saves in this half, York. We thought in the first half he should have done better. But a telling low save to his left hand side. He saved a penalty as well. And more sprightly in the second half. Mona were the third ranked team coming out of the first round behind Jamaica College and St. Andrew Technical, who are the top two. And many would say that those three teams are probably the, the strongest teams they have seen in the Manning Cup this season. Yeah. There are some voices that, you know, reckon St. George's College definitely in the conversation, but certainly not at the level of Mona, St. Andrew Technical and Jamaica College. They right, I mean, St. George's have done well, of course. Yeah. But yeah. As I said, as the rounds progress and the matchups become closer, you look at the squads, these three teams as a top three, te as a top three rank, rank teams have looked the best in terms of Squad depth, ability, in production. When you think that Some of the other Gordon schools have had good individuals, but maybe as a team, not the strongest. Yeah. Kishin Gordon was a starter last season and he's coming on as a substitute now. That shows you that they're 
some amount of improvement in the overall uh, Mona squad. So, yeah, I mean, there have been an influx of players, but separate and apart from that, the junior squads also coming up. Here's Vassal, which does speak well as, as well for St. George's. That was one of the reasons why their team is a lot stronger this year as well after winning the was it the under 16 or the under 14. They went to the final, final of the under the 16 final. last yeah. year, yeah. And lost the champion. Mm -hmm. Right. Here's Vassal. Releases Kishane Gordon. There's no relation to Rabina Gordon. He turns inside, fires. Wasn't a bad shot. Got a spectacular goal last season against Camperdown in that hotly contested 4-3 matchup. So update to you from the Dacosta Cup, BB Coke versus Manchester High. BB Coke scoring in the second minute against Manchester High. Of course, they are in the round of 16. And eight teams will qualify for the quarterfinals. And that will be two groups of four for the quarterfinals for the Dacosta Cup. Currently, it's four groups of four. Four groups of four, yeah. The in top the round two. Of, to and the top two. Yeah, from we'll, we'll group. Yeah. Yeah, big lead for Manchester. They're the pride of the parish of Manchester. Oh, 1-0 for B.B. Coke, actually. My apologies. B.B. Coke coming off that big win, 3-2 against Happy Grove. So, yeah, B.B. Coke looking to go deep in the tournament. Did win the Ben Francis Cup a, a couple of seasons ago. Well, it's, it's what, 2019 was that? That they won, they were 20, 2019, the year after Charlie Munt, winning the Ben Francis Cup, B.B. Coke. And... Yeah, another strong team coming out of St. Elizabeth. B.B. Coke, a young school compared to others, were never really troublemakers, you would say, in that St. Elizabeth group. But of recent years, yeah. they have put together some good units. And for them to get two wins from two matches, if the, result con if the, if the match continues on the same path, that would be big, almost confirming that they would get through to the following, the next round. Yeah. Kingston College leading champion 2-0. Their encounter at the Stadium Eastfield in the Manning Cup. A reverse of what we saw a week, a, a few days ago, where Campion were leading 2-0, only to lose 3-2. So 5 to an aggregate, it's very difficult for Campion. And this is Campion's away game, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Kingston yeah, we, College. Would definitely yeah. favor Kingston College as well. Yeah, Kingston College. Uh, uh, Campion actually coming into it had to win by two clear goals. So I don't think at that point, at this point, that will be happening. Here's Mackenzie for Mona. Finds Brown. Does well to turn, but the shot high over the bar. Carlton Brown there. Two goals to his name this season. So 20 shots from Mona, two for Jonathan Grant. And of the two from Jonathan Grant, they would have converted one. Proud to play in through Robinson. Kishin Gordon now. Rabina Gordon chasing, but he's just down, recognizing that. It's a corner kick for Mona High. Peralta. Thomas on the ball. Yeah, 
Peralta with a free kick for Mona. Lifts it in the area. Kishin Gordon. To Thomas, who plays it out for Denzel McKenzie. Robinson back to McKenzie. He's under pressure, but evades his man. Sends it in, but Leighton with the snapshot. That went wide of the mark. Williams trying to clear for Jonathan Grant. Craig Butler trying to show some skills there. Did manage to get it up in the air under some amount of duress. Another change being made. Peralta coming off. Tayshawn McIntosh coming on. And Rasheen Rodney coming in for number three, Stevon Johnson. Here's Leighton. Kishane Gordon was asking for a better pass from Sean Leighton. Play it down for Jonathan Grant. Here's a Sportsmax moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. Here's a consolation goal for Jonathan Grant. Ball breaking for Antoine Ellis, who got by Peralta and fired at home for Akeem Bernard. The Mona custodian. And uh, Ellis there with that effort. Moves from four goals to five. Five goals, five assists this season for the number seven. The flair to watch showing why he was given that designation. So 4-1 on the day, 8-1 on aggregate, Mona leading Jonathan Grant. Of course, two of the goals for Mona being penalties, they actually failed to convert one of those penalties. Three chances they had via that route weak attempt that from looks to be the substitute Giovanni Robinson you can look at that number at the bottom right of your screen I tell you it looks like an 18 but it's 13 Perhaps the match, the match commissioner can help us in our plight. Chris Taylor insists on different numbering fonts. Here's Jonathan Grant. Offside flag is up against the advancing play on that occasion. Another substitution being made by Jonathan Grant. The sweeper keeper is out now out of his 18 yard box. A 
Peter Gordon back in defense now. Marin Thomas goes to Gordon. Gordon brings Bernard into the thick of things. Kenzie lifts this one to the direction of Sheldon York. Beautiful pass played in for Brown. Brown finishes for Mona. It's 5 1. Carlton Brown. What a year. What a difference a year makes. Didn't have much goals to his credit last year, Carlton Brown, but three this season so far. And a cool finish from that build up play. Yeah, nice ball into the area and composed finish from Brown as well. Started with Robino Gordon through the center of the park. And yeah, his total football scenario, wing back ended up in the six yard area for Mona. And Carlton Brown will be taken off as well. Heavily criticized last season for his work, especially against Carl, uh, Ca Clarendon College, where he was actually taken off early as a wing, but was really exposed by Hull and company. And yeah, very good season so far this year. Three goals now to go with his five assists. Yeah, done his replacement. Yeah, Mona padding their stats. <laughs> 46 goals in the competition now for Mona. And they've just conceded, what, five? Four in the first round and now one in two matches against Jonathan Grant. Thomas lifts it for Gordon. Kishin Gordon was offside. With a certain change as well, the sun was out a lot. Now those grey clouds that we spoke about have multiplied. A lot cooler. Stronger breeze as well, and I wouldn't be surprised if we if we get some rain as well, Dean. Yeah, those are the clouds building every second. And yeah, you're not actually seeing the back part of the mountains anymore, so it's on its way. I mean, with the breeze, it will help to push it, hopefully, away from the ground, but yeah. That trough still evident. Here's Jonathan Grant trying to advance. Play broken up. Here's Jonathan Grant. Good defensive work from Rubino Gordon who gave it away. Can the superior physical presence of the Mona players just be in the undoing of Jonathan Grant when they do get the opportunity to come forward? Denzel McKenzie lifts one forward. Daniel Campbell finding Kishane Gordon. Gordon does well to get room for himself the shot was weak in the end
So quite a few Mona players, Chris, would have uh, had some say in the player to man of the match conversation. Of course, Denzel McKenzie having two goals. But in my mind, Marion Thomas, three assists. Here's offside. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Thomas has been the best player on the park. I mean, it's been an all-round performance for Mona, but it's been easy for them. But Thomas has been involved in everything that has happened for Mona. Winning the first two penalties, providing the f for the fourth goal. He's been on the park. He's orchestrated the middle of the park. He's really been the creator and everything. In fact, even now, getting deep and stabilizing the, the, the back line when on a few occasions that Jonathan Grant have tried to press. Uh, I agree with you. I, I think he's been the best player. Credit to McKenzie for scoring those two goals, one which should have been saved from the, by the keeper. But yeah. Rashad Williams there. Being a spark in the second half of Jonathan Grant on this right and flank. Fassel doing just enough to keep that one out of harm's way for Mona. Four of signs for Mona, three for Jonathan Grant. Only two minutes of time added. We're in the second of the two. Gordon on the end of that pass from Bernard Gordon. Gordon! It's an assist for the keeper. A goal for Kishane Gordon, the substitute. 6 1 on the day. 10 1. And Craig Butler there acknowledging the input of Akeem Bernard, the goalkeeper, in that particular play. And talk about starting from the back. Gordon doing well just to get by York. The technical ability of the Mona players is certainly superior to many of their counterparts. Yeah, and a deflated team is Jonathan Grant, obviously, at this point. They know that it's all over in terms of their season. 6-1. Good for Gordon to get on the score sheet. His fourth of the season. Building confidence right throughout the squad, which is important from a Mona perspective, especially with more to come. Ara Headley has seen enough. He's seen what he wants to see, I'm sure. Mona comprehensively dismantling their opposition. Jonathan Grant on this, the return leg of their second round fixture. Akeem Bernard got on the score sheet. Had an assist to boot as well. That's a custodian. He had two. Denzel McKenzie. A free kick and a tap in from close range. But it's been comprehensive for Mona. They booked their spot in the quarterfinal. And they can be joined by Kingston College, St. Andrew Technical. And Haile Selassie. Or Tivoli. The referees, they have their own time discussing some of the things that they would have seen that they want to improve on, or that was done well. But it's been all Mona in their backyard, you could say, as it really should be, using the crowd support and the home advantage to their full credit. Confirmation of the full time score. Mona 6, Jonathan Grant 1 here at the JC Ashenheim Complex.
O'Hara Headley got things going. And in that melee there, there was a shot from Harris that had to be blocked and Peralta also trying. From Aaron Thomas came forward on quite a few occasions. That flashed wide of the upright. And that was an omen of things to come from that number eight. Romarian Thomas had three assists on the afternoon. Easily handled by the goalkeeper, that free kick from Jonathan Grant. But this is where the game would open for Mona. Foul from Dominic Grant on Romarian Thomas. And Rabino Gordon converted easily from 12 yards. Added to his goal tally for the season. Rabino Gordon, 13 goals this season. Peralta would also have a shot that flashed wide. Dante Peralta darting in the area. And another shot from Harris was saved expertly by the keeper. Romarin Thomas would advance again. And Parks bringing him down just after Parks had received a yellow card. Mercy was shown by the officially not handed him another card that would have sent him off but there was no mercy from that kick the goalkeeper Kim Bernard raw power not much of placement Stevie York could do nothing against that one Denzel McKenzie stepped forward and fired from the free kick Stevie York really should have done better a weak palm to that one Denzel McKenzie get another goal eight at that time for the season. Romarin Thomas sent this delightful ball in and a cool finish first time from Denzel McKenzie, his second on the afternoon. Nine goals along with eight, 18 assists for the number 10, the national under 17 representative for Mona, Denzel McKenzie. Well, they weren't out of it. Not in spirit, Antoine Ellis converting the player to watch for Jonathan Grant getting one back. Destroying the clean sheet of Mona. And that was a cool finish from the number seven, the player to watch, showing why he was given that designation. It would have been hard to come back, certainly. And I'm sure that was the intention. A penalty given on this occasion as the Parks handed the ball just inside the area. Peralta st step forward and a double save of sorts from Sheldon York. The undoing of Mona and Peralta as he tried to get on the score sheet. But it wasn't the end of scoring. This ball broke well. Carlton Brown, for all of his troubles last year, showing that there is redemption and there is hope in another year. Getting on the score sheet three for the season for Carlton Brown the number five for Mona and that was five on the afternoon for Mona Akeem Bernard beating the line with that pass Kishane Gordon the substitute came on and converted Cooley in the 90th minute and finishing the scoring on the day for Mona at the JC Aschenheim complex Mona six goals 10-1 on aggregate and the advance to the quarter-final. Here are the stats. 13 shots on target for Mona of 26 attempts. Half of them on target. Two from two for Jonathan Grant. Eight fouls for Mona, nine for Jonathan Grant. Jonathan Grant, they had the majority of the yellow cards. Three to Mona's one. No red cards. All the players remain at the park. Seven offsides, four to Mona. They had 12 corners. Jonathan Grant only had one. And Sheldon York had to make seven saves. Akeem Bernard only making one. 75% of the possession with six goals. Mona beating Jonathan Grant 6-1. We go now to Jene, who has the player of the match, the man of the match from Sportsmax. Congratulations. You are the digital, well, Sportsmax man of the match, Romarion Thomas. Romarion Mona High scored... 10 goal, well, 10-1 on aggregate. Assess your performance today. Well, it was a very great performance. And first and foremost, I want to thank my family, my coaches, and my school, and my teammates. 
Well, in the quarterfinals, you may play either Kingston Technical or Stats. How ready do you think Mona is for those opponents? Very ready. We are prepared for it. Well, I saw a lot of students come out today to support Mona. How important is it for the, well, the support of the school for you and your performance? Well, it was a very great one. The below are confident. I will come out victorious. Well, congratulations and enjoy your Man of the Match trophy. Thank you. Now we welcome the coach of Jonathan Grant High. Coach, not the results you would have wanted today, but your boys did put up a fight. What do you think might have went wrong? Well, um, today, you know, as uh, I think we were basically late to most of the balls um, on the field. You know, Mona, Mona basically were more aggressive than us. And our boys, um, I didn't think they show up today in terms of their, their spirit towards the game. Well, you speak about late. You guys are also late to, to the venue. Well, um, what, yes. was the, what was the issue there? <laughs> well, I guess there was some uh, miscommunication, you know, um, on, on my part. So, yeah, that's the reason why today. Well, Coach, as your season comes to an end, how will you continue to develop these youngsters with your program? Well, um, football is a um, never-ending development um, where boys are concerned, you know. Um, I think this season, yes, uh, the Manning Cup, we are out of it, but um, we still have a our chance at the Walker Cup. Um, so we still continue to train our boys and develop them to be, you know, great men in society, not just for football only, because Jonathan can don't look at it as, as football only. You know, we develop young men for, for the society, you know. Well, thank you, Coach. Yes, you're welcome. And now we welcome the coach of Mona High, Craig Butler, and his assistant, well, Technical director. <laughs> Technical director. Coach. coach, your boys put on another show for us today. From your perspective, assess the performance. I think that the, the quality of the players showed today, the quality of the commitment to the systems that we have showed today, and we employed them. We're able to keep the ball, we're able to, to attack, to press, and to defend comfortably. So I'm very impressed with the team and a good, good workout today. Good, more, you know, more power to Jonathan Grant. I'm happy for the, the, the challenge. Earlier today when we spoke, you, talk, you told me about taking it a step at a time. As the quarterfinals are in near sight, how will you keep this high spirit in your camp? Then, well, we, we've been working on that from the season, before the season even started, to be honest with you. Um, so we've been pushing the boys from early. We have them running just about at their peak now. So... I think, I think we're ready, we're, we're quite ready. As you can see today, even with the changes and the substitutions we made, we just about kept the same, same shape and form, and the boys were finishing well today, which is, what, which is what we were working on, mostly during this week, trying to get them to finish. Coach Butler, I know you're a big advocate for the Mona Pride. The students came out in their numbers today. Speak about how important that is for your team and their performance. Mona Pride. It's good for the school, it's good for Jamaica, it's good for the students, it's good for the players. We always push this so that we can develop. And to say Mona to where it is now compared to where it was three years ago, not just in football but in, throughout this whole school, the camaraderie, the love, the pride. Children are dressing properly, making sure they're here, home, ready for school, happy to go to school and the teachers are awesome, the principal really is a good committed principal and I'm proud of the whole school and it means a lot to us going forward. Well, congratulations coach and all the best in the next round. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Confirmation of the full-time score, Mona 6, Jonathan Grant 1. That's in the second leg, 10-1 on aggregate. We go to a break, more football action from the Ashenheim Stadium. Yo, Issa, my schoolboy football look this season. People am ready, you know. All right, then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. To watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, back a cup. Which team I win the championship this season? Yo, Issa, for my dive at school, I got finish the league and beat now. Which you I got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Issa, Missy the fans are roll out all boat. Black man vehicle, looking at the crowd, but loan a support us from school and community too. People nothing at the stand, some of the support rate, they were some about it on TV too. Country and town unite for one reason. He's a schoolboy football, good job, look one, look hard. Which team are the best? 
Competition and never have it nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm gonna score from far and them love with peaceful and the youth now. Yo, it's a schoolboy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I still people are but member which party start. It's a schoolboy football. Run, come, 